we're going to jump down to a new section, uh, utilization. Now, usually the first time that uh, you pull this up, uh, looking at your fleet, if you've never looked at how many hours your fleet actually runs, how much idle time your fleet runs, sometimes this can be a little shocking. So first time you look at this, I always encourage people to uh, be a student of it, uh, think about it, understand it. Uh, but you've got access here to uh, a lot of really good information. So again, got two years worth of this. I'm only looking at seven days because we've got 4,000 machines uh, queued up here. And in the last seven days, I'm looking at how many, how many hours did my fleet accumulate? How many hours did my fleet idle? So that is really going to be dependent on your machines. So your newer machines are capable of a lot more rich data sets than your older machines, but your older machines are still going to give you some good stuff here as well. So if I roll down here, uh, let's say, for example, I want to know what is the highest idle time machine in my fleet currently for the last seven days. All I got to do is sort this and what it's going to do and remind you, I've got a lot of machines pulled up here. This thing is going to sort the entire list based on who, who has the highest idle hours generated down to the smallest. All right. So we are looking at utilization now on this particular fleet that I've got pulled up and you can see I've got 21,000 plus total runtime hours. I've got 5,000 plus idle time hours. And this is telling me I got about 26% idle time. Now I've got a bunch of filters engaged here. So I've got this boiled down. Remember your filters. Uh, if I only want to look at a particular asset or a particular model, I can always go up to my filters and do that. One of the things I wanted to point out here is geofences. So if you don't know what a geofence is, very simply, it is an area on a map that you will, you will draw out, and we're going to do it, by the way, and you give it a name. So think about a job site. So maybe you've got job site number one, job site number two. And once you do that, you could quickly come in here and you could filter to a particular job site and you could know how many run hours you have at a particular job site for the time period that you're looking at. You can go in here and say, hey, I, I just want to look at what my idle percentage is or I want to look at what my fuel level percentage is. Again, you got lots of options here. When I scroll down here, again, you'll see this running list of data. Uh, so I've got my highest offender for hour uh, generated uh, at idle uh, right up here at the top. And uh, this particular asset ran for 109 hours and it idled for 74. So that might be one that I'm making a phone call to that particular job and saying, hey, do you guys really need that machine or not? Or what's going on here? When you think about idle time, again, the first time you look at that, it might be a little shocking. Uh, really be a student of that and, and start thinking about the job, thinking about the application, thinking about what's going on. When I think of cost associated with idle time, when I start doing that math in my head, I start thinking about things like how much of my warranty has been spent. How about a, how about a, a PM interval because I'm using up hours on the machine, so I've now I've got to change oil. Uh, if this particular machine's got DPF filters, right, that can, that can impact the life of a DPF filter as well. So those costs start adding up when I start thinking about idle time, but how do you know which one's doing it more? The idea here is, is this quickly allows you to see where and who do I need to talk to. You can download this whole thing, again, back into a spreadsheet, or I can schedule another report, just like we looked at on the other, other screens, other visuals. Um, I can turn these reference lines off, and I can group this whole thing by a lot of different options here if I want to look at this. Again, some of these numbers are going to be predicated based on how new your machines are. Always keep that in mind. Now I'm going to jump down to asset operation. So this one is very similar to what we just looked at. Uh, but the idea behind this one is uh, I want to see how a particular asset is operating on any given day. So you'll notice I've got all these individual days lined out up here. Let's go take a look at this D6. So what this is now showing me is an actual breakdown of the time of day that this machine started and the end of day uh, when it actually keyed off. 
So if this machine is running two shifts, which is what it looks like here, then this is probably what I anticipate seeing. Um, if it's not supposed to run two shifts and I see a key on event that happens at eight o'clock at night, I might be asking a different question about this particular job site. Again, this starts jumping into the security around the asset, the security around your job site. But again, you're powered here with the information to see what's going on. I can pick another one out here. Let's go look at this excavator, give you an idea of what that looks like. Again, you, it breaks it down for you, date, time, all that good stuff. All right, let's jump into maps. So I mentioned geofences uh, a little bit earlier and, and how that uh, can be used to impact your filtering, impact your reporting, impact your alerts. So these things start to build off of each other. So I'm zoomed into the center part of Virginia here. Uh, we're looking at Richmond and you can see a lot of these bubbles called out. So what that means is, is there's 203 assets in that bubble right there. You also notice just north of that, I've got, I got a call out here for Cat. Well, that's actually our store. So what Caterpillar has done is no matter what area you're operating in, if you want to know, hey, I'm in a new area and I need to know the next closest uh, cat dealer store to me, it's right here here in the map for you. This is all powered by Google Maps, so uh, really good map platform here. And if you have any experience at all on drawing geofences, so remember what we're doing is, is we're going to circle up a particular area and we're going to give it a name. So I'm, I'm actually over our Mechanicsville shop right here, just north of Richmond. And you'll notice down here, this little polygon, all I gotta do is click on that. And what it's done now is, is it's immediately dropped me into the geofence creation page. So I start clicking on the screen and you'll notice my polygon is showing up and I've just drawn a geofence around our Mechanicsville shop. So I'm just gonna call this Carter Shop. This can be a standard geofence. If I hit the drop down, you'll notice I've got some options. So for you out there that maybe you run three or four job sites at any given time and you wanna have a particular job site here, call it a job site. Remember that when we get to adding the notifications part of this. This can really help you when you start thinking about organizing who you want to be alerted for a particular notification. I'm gonna leave this one as standard because we're just gonna do a standard geofence. I can give it, a, give it a description. I can even give it an end date. So if you know this job is gonna be, is due to end in November, I don't wanna give myself a little cushion, but I don't wanna to have to come back in and maintain this fence. Maybe I give it December 31st and this fence expires. One of the other things that this uh, update has done for us is before when you would draw a geofence, it was kind of etched in stone. You'd save it and if you came back later and you were like, ah, you know what, I need to adjust this. In the old platform, you would have to delete it and start all over again. Now you can edit these. So at any given point in time, I can actually come back in here and it's as simple as grabbing one of these dots and moving it, okay? Now, I always tell people in geofences, rather than aim small, miss small, I actually say aim big, miss big. So you gotta remember these are operating in a 2D kind of GPS accuracy. So give yourself a little cushion here when you're drawing these fences. So I'm gonna close that out. All right, it navigates me right back to here. One of the things I failed to mention, so you'll notice right here, I've got all told 2,827 assets pulled up here. As I was zooming in and out within that screen, you'll notice that the list of assets that I'm looking at here automatically filters to what I'm looking at right here in this map. That's really nice, especially when you consider if you're 
If you're a, a contractor that's spread out over a pretty wide area and you want to quickly zoom in to where your particular assets are, maybe your, uh, your haul truck uh, folks that are, that are coming to pick up machines in a low boy you need to quickly toggle to an area and find where a machine is, you've got that ability right here. At any given time, within the app, okay, so if I'm on my phone or I'm on my tablet, uh, if you've armed your truck drivers with uh, access to this, they can actually do directions directly to an asset from the app. All they gotta do is click on it and say navigate and it takes me right to it.